So, top of five, Keene County back on the field. Rod gets on the hill. It'll be 8-9-1 for Vasquez, Randolph, and Mathis. Well, folks, why don't you tell them my story since I can't? <laughs> <laughs> At least not right now, anyway. Does the word travesty come to mind? One of, being, being that's one of your favorite words. <laughs> Usually comes to my mind. Ramon Vasquez at the plate. He has he is bounced out so far. He is 0 for 1. No, but you might be able to help. <laughs> Here's the pitch. Here's a ground ball. Second baseman going to his right. Garcia, good play. And a better scoop by Nate Rollison for the out. The 4 3 put out. So, Garcia, nice job going to his right. He covered a lot of ground, not quite behind second base, but it was close. Edge of the outfield grass. Threw across his body and got him to the outfield side of the bag, and Rollison went out for the backhand scoop. Went out for Ed Randolph, the DH, who was popped out to the catcher roll for one. Again, 2 nothing. Wisconsin's lead, top of five. Rod Getz. Going to keep his team in this thing. Here's a foul coming back out of play. So a strike to Randolph brings up Joe Mathis. Curveball up and out for the ball, and it's 1-1. One, one. Another foul on a play left field side. Goes back up and over the hill. Games today in this league. Fort Wayne at West Michigan. Michigan at South Bend. Burlington at Quad City today. Lansing is in Peoria. Wisconsin at Kane County, as you well know. Cedar Rapids at Clinton. And Rockford at Beloit today. Martinez against Arias in that matchup there. That pitch up too high. And it's 2-2. Two and two. Again in the Central starting today. Peoria led Rockford by a game and a half. Beloit 5 back. Kane County 7 and Wisconsin 11. There's the line shot. That's going to be a base hit right center field. Coming over. Is Fanaro to pick it up and toss it back. One out single for Randolph. One on, one out for Joe Mathis. In the West, Quad City leads Cedar Rapids by three and a half. Clinton four and Burlington four and a half. In the East, West Michigan leading Lansing by one. Fort Wayne six back. Michigan ten and a half. And South Bend 14 off the pace in the second half standings. Runner at first, one out. Mathis, a strikeout and a fly to right so far. Boy, and I'm just <laughs> an astonishing crowd here today. That pitch down low for a ball. Again, I would not be surprised in the least if this sets the all-time attendance record here today in the final home regular season game. There are people everywhere. Here's the pitch. Line shot left field line. It will be a foul ball. Rolled up against the wall. Landed on the warning track, just foul. Gave it a long ride, but a long strike to Mathis. So he'll come back. So, all that is, is the loud foul. And Mike Goff, the manager of the Rattlers, third base coach's box, given the signs. And their pitching coach is Pat Rice. Joaquin Contreras, their hitting coach for the Rattlers. In class, a ball club for the Seattle Mariners. Here's the 1-1. There is a foul out of play left field side halfway up onto the hill. About as crowded as that hill has absolutely ever been. The 1-2. That pitch in the dirt and Ryan Roberts in a good save. Well, able to slab to his right and knock it down. 2-2. Two and two. Here to Mathis. They would a ground ball come in handy because you've got Thompson on deck and then Arias. Let's not <laughs> have too many guys on base for those men coming up. Hard ground ball to Garcia to second for one. Goodell not going to have a relay, but they do get the out middle of the diamond on the 4-6. So Randolph erased. Mathis at first base in the fielder's choice. One on two dead for Carl Thompson. Doubled and scored in the first. Bounce to third in the third. Already 2-0. 
the Rattler lead. Overcast skies here today, but really overall, again, comfortable day. Grodo first, and the runner back. Again, last time for Rod Getz. Had a pretty good performance. His last outing, six and a third innings. Gave up three runs, only two of them earned. On seven hits with four strikeouts in a walk. Sunday in a loss, three to two to Rockford. So, trying to build on that. And again, Getz, we talked about the number of losses that he has had on the year. And you look at that and you say, okay, 13 defeats. But he has been bothered by a bad elbow this year and is pitching some tough luck. He has had some some tough outings where he really has struggled. But the last time out, pretty good game and trying to build on that here today. Meanwhile, Treywick, his last outing, haven't had a chance to tell you, he lost to Beloit on Tuesday, 11-7. to As there's a curveball strike, and he only lasted three and a third innings his last time out for Treywick. Five runs, four of them earned on seven hits. Two strikeouts, no walk. So he has already lasted a whole lot longer than he did his last time out. Treywick here for the Rattlers. One on two dead in the 0-1 pitch. Throw to first and the runner diving back again. Head first safely. In this ball game and a tape delayed basis after, of course, NIU action here tonight. Now tomorrow we're back live, but it's a Sunday night game from Appleton as it'll be at 7 p.m. at 6.45 pregame. Runner fakes going. Pitch out. Snap throw to first and the runner back. But again, tomorrow night, Sunday at 7 First pitch, 6.45 our pregame from the home of the Rattlers. And then Monday is an afternoon game on Labor Day, Monday at 1, which makes it a live 12.45 p.m. pregame show for that broadcast. So yesterday was tape delay, today tape delay, but everything else the rest of the way going to be live. Stretching the 1-1. Runner fakes going again, pitch downstairs. And becomes 2-1. and one. Right now, two runs on four hits, no errors for the Rattlers. Kane County, no runs, three hits, no errors right now. Here's the 2-1. Winner goes, swing and a miss, the throw down a beauty, and they got it. Nice throw, Ryan Robertson. So the 2-4, and Joe Mathis caught trying to steal for out number three. No runs ahead, no errors, and... Nobody left on. Rob Leary, good job as a catching coordinator. Would you work you work with Robbie before the game? <laughs> so we now move along. Bottom of five. It's two nothing, Wisconsin. As we come back. Bottom of five. Kane County coming up with Fanaro, McCartney, and Goodell. Here this inning. Down by a tally. Of two to nothing. First time around, Fanaro, a bounce to third. See if he can get something going. Line in the pinch. That one downstairs for a ball. Here's the 1-0. There's a bouncer foul of third base, goes into the dugout. So 1-1. One, one. Always good to have a celebrity in the booth. Yeah, well, you know. We've had quite a few of them here in the last few weeks. Paul Palian. All the guys that do the Harry Carey imitations. <laughs> we, had Jim, exactly. we had Jim Volkman in here last oh, week. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Enough Paul Palian. You know what I heard about that? The word of that spread <laughs> The word of Jim Volkman's appearance in the booth spread to Toledo, Ohio. That's, that's, that's kind of scary. <laughs> That's pretty frightening. Yep, Kevin Matthews was in here as well. Doing his gym shorts. There's a pitch downstairs for a ball. Two and one. Had many uh, guys, top guys in the Marlins organization have been in here. Mark Kotze was in here his first few hours in Geneva. Sure. <laughs> pitch outside and low for the ball. You know, fresh, off, fresh from the Olympics. 
Mm-hmm. I, I don't believe this, Mark. He just dropped his contact. Don't move. I won't. Paul just dropped his contact. Oh, he found it. Way to go. Oh, eagle eye there. I say eagle eye because he only has one <laughs> right at the moment. The 3 one I pop up. Foul territory could be playable by the tarp. Let's see. Nope, it's going to land in about the third or fourth row. Yeah, then it bounced back and landed about <laughs> yeah, 20th and 27th and then up onto the concourse. Jerry Harrison also was in here sure. earlier in the uh, year. And we've talked to a lot of the uh, the Marlins brass throughout the course of the season. Dave Dombrowski, the general manager, and Dan Lanetta, the head of the minor leagues, also their assistant GM has been in the booth. Frank Wren. That pitch high ball four. So with that, leadoff walk for Fanaro here in the fifth. Brings up Summer McCartney, who was bounced out. Of course, John Bowles was in this booth mm -hmm. before he became manager of the Marlins when he was just player personnel director way back when. And his ball club's playing pretty well of late. Now, Paul, you said you just talked to John Bowles, didn't you? You went, you went and saw the, uh, the Marlins play, what, in Cincinnati? Well, last night I went to the Conference USA inaugural football game and uh, during the afternoon had a chance to wander over to Riverfront. High fly ball, deep right center field, long run. This one going to be... Wow, did he make the catch? He made that catch. Incredible. They're going to throw to first base and double off Fanaro, who was standing at third. We had runners at second and third, thinking that ball was playable, bouncing off the wall. In turn, it's going to be a catch. Wow. <laughs> That was a tremendous grab out there in center field by Joe Mathis. Boy, did he run a long way, and he got that with a step to despair right in front of that Berlin's tool sign. Hit that sign. You and I both, I thought he dropped it, but he, well, he bounced off there. He had to regain his bearings to figure out where he's going. They're screaming at him to throw at the first base for the double play. And a good L's. Line drive, deep foot foul onto the hill, left field sign. One strike to get out. Base is empty. Two down. That turns into a double play on a line to the wall. Wow. And then a throw to first that easily picked off Panaro considering he was standing at third base. Yeah, Joe looked at that and said, no way is he catching that. He took off, and he was standing at third. Line shot. That's a base hit. Goodell dumps it into left field. Around first base and take a look. Two out single. Brings up Ryan Robertson. Well, I put an exclamation on that with wow, but Paul actually said that already. <laughs> But Math is still, even after that, he's, he's limping a little bit, Mark, and just kind of walking, pacing out in center field, going, yeah, that was a long way to run for that, <laughs> for me to ram myself into the wall out there. But uh, he uh -huh. made a great play. So uh, did you get a chance to talk much to John or anybody? Or? Uh, I spent about 45 minutes with Billy McMillan, and he is just enjoying. He's, he's still somewhat in awe. He was telling me a story about how, he accidentally bumped into Ozzie Smith at the batting cage. He thought he forgot his hat, and by chance he ran into Ozzie, talked to Ozzie for about 15 minutes, and had him sign a couple of baseballs. Oh, great. Pitch upstairs a ball to Ryan Robertson. And Bolsey's doing real well, uh, making the adjustment. It's starting to settle down a little bit now, I guess, but uh, you know, as you get into the last month of the season, uh, he's looking forward to calling up uh, some more of the prospects, and that'll be happening uh what, tomorrow, right? Pitch outside for a ball. Yeah, that's right. So Now the rosters expand to 40, so there will be some other former Cougars that, that do get the call. Here's the 1-1. And a shot to short left field coming on. Catch going to be made by Tinoco. So the line out retires the side. No runs on a hit. No errors and a man left on. And Sixth inning on the way, still 2 0 Wisconsin. So, back here at Kane County, as we go now to top of six, 2 0 Wisconsin. And our thanks to Paul Palian, the former Cougar employee, who's back here to say hey to the group after becoming the head of media relations for the Mid American Conference. Always good to see P squared. Absolutely. Of course, NIU will be joining, rejoining the MAC. Absolutely. That's next year, correct? Yeah, and that's a great move for them. I don't think there's any doubt that that was the move they had to make. 
Well, the money is nice in playing a Penn State or a but that's or all that's a Florida, nice yeah, or a Florida. They are going to fit nicely right back in there. Carl Thompson has doubled and scored and bounced to third, takes a strike at the knees, 0-1. And an automatic berth in a bowl game comes along with that conference championship. Line in the 0-1. Swing and a miss, breaking ball down and away, chased it, two strikes. I was going to say, don't ask me what the name of that bowl game is anymore because they've changed it so many times. I, ooh, which corporation is sponsoring it now? Uh, you got me. <laughs> changing all the names of those things. and They've lost me. Here's the 0-2. Line shot right field. Fanaro, it'll be a one-hopper to him. Fanaro picks it up. That's the single to right for Thompson. Well, he's up, he's I was playing say, pretty Mark, deep. Yeah, he was playing pretty deep for the opposite field. But again, the flag not blowing. Wind not obviously a factor, and the ball's carrying a little bit better here. And Joe found that out earlier in the game. The line drive that almost went over his head, so he's taking a couple steps back. And now, obviously, with the big man up, he's going to play a little bit deeper in right field, <laughs> even more so. David Arias at the plate, already with an RBI double and a line to right. Now, as Harry Carey used to say about Dave Winfield, there's a chopper foul, first base side past the dugout. He used to say of Dave Winfield many times, and Winfield was in his prime. Too big to be a man and just a little too small to be a horse. <laughs> he is definitely a big guy. He can hit the ball a long ways. 0-1, runner fakes going, swing and a miss. Chase that one down and away. Two strikes. Boy, that's where you want to throw to David Aries. Down and away. You got he swings. To. You got to keep it down and away from him. But who was that? Who was it that said that? I was reading it in Sports Illustrated article on Mark McGuire. Did you read that, Mogs, in the college mm -hmm. football preview issue? Here's the 0-2 outside, one and two. They were talking about McGuire and his. I mean, he could end up beating Maris's home run record this year, even missing 23 games. The way he's going. Yeah, the pace he has been on, he would he would finish with, I believe, 61 or 62. Here's the one-two. Outside for the ball, and they asked an American League pitcher. I can't think of who it is now. How to how to how to pitch to McGuire? He had the greatest line. He goes, "I like to pitch it low and behind him." <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, okay. That's about the only place you can pitch it to him. And there's a deep drive, but curving foul. Thankfully, well out of here, but well foul for David Arias, and it stays at two-two. Well, there it is. You down and in on Adam on that pitch and that's where you got to throw it to him if you're going to throw it inside you got to keep it down there so far and so far in he's either not going to swing at or only thing you really do with it is pull it foul which is what he did there and uh, thankfully so well two and two Arias waiting for this offering from Getz and a fastball down and in so a full count three and two well V we've talked about this before you you figure if your starter gets you six innings, good solid innings, he's had a quality start. And Rod Getz is right there. Yeah. This is a pivotal inning, obviously, going through the heart of the order with a leadoff man on. Shot to straightaway, deep center field, win to the track. He will make the catch. Bounce off the wall and toss it back into play as, thankfully, Arias hit that one to just about the deepest part of the park. Shoo! <laughs> you weren't kidding. Wow, I thought that ball was out of here. So did I. He hit that, like you say, to the deepest part of the park right in front of the Chicago Tribune sign. And Randy Wynn right on top of it, the hauled in with his back up against the wall. Oh, my. But as any good pitcher will tell you, Mark, just a loud out. You got it. It's an out. <laughs> 400 feet later, it's still an out. It's just an out to center in the scoreboard. Luis Tinoco has a strikeout. He's also been hit by a pitch and has scored a run. And just like any one of those bloop singles or, or bleeders in the infield, is looks like a line shot in the scorebook. Mm -hmm. Breaking ball down and away. One and zero. Oh. Well, Hugh had told us a while ago that the Marlins against the Reds today had scored five in the first. Problem was the Reds had scored seven in the second. Ouch. 
And then I think Marlins came back with another one. So last update, it was 7-6 Cincy. High chopper to short. Goodell throws in the dirt. Throws it. Bounces off the wall behind Rallison. And the runners will hold now first and third after Goody just absolutely threw it right into the ground. Well, that's just flat-out footwork, Mark. He's coming up to get that ball, and he never really squares his feet. He's trying to throw on the run and short-armed it over there because his balance and everything was moving forward, and he didn't catch his balance, tried to throw before he really was set. And uh, that ball short-hopped well in front of Nate Rollison, a very tough play for him. Luckily, it bounced off the wall instead of going into the seats. Yep, it bounced off the wall and came right to Nate. And uh, he was able to keep everybody pretty much where they were or where they were headed to. So first and third. That's a team leading 33rd error on Goodell. So went foul back over our heads. Well, in support of and Goody, support of him, he's played a few positions this year. Well, absolutely, absolutely. That is never easy to do when you are bouncing around the infield. And the outfield, for that matter. There's a foul out of play left field side. All right, well, we're 0-2 now, way ahead of this hitter. you got to punch one out yourself in this situation. That's just the way it is. Either that or you got to get a ground ball, double play type of ball. But way ahead in the count, let's see what Rod's got left. Is Lynn Jones is thinking the same way as I was just going to say, Mark, you got to have somebody up just in case this gets away from you. Pitch inside for the ball. Pat Trend is up. Matter of fact, he and Evans throwing back and forth to each other down there in the bullpen. Yeah, Mike Evans... Newly acquired left-hander. That pitch inside for a ball. Two and two. Mike Evans is the pickup for Kane County. From the uh, the loss of Roosevelt Brown with the broken uh, bone in his wrist. Pitcher steps off. I was going to say about Rosie, he was up here in the stands. He's behind the plate now with the other guys and the radar guns here tonight. But when they were throwing those squishy balls out before the game, he actually caught one. He was up here with the fans having a good time, too. Two and two right now. At least he was trying to make his way down to his seat and couldn't really go anywhere. But he snagged one off a couple deflections. You want me to look something up in that uh, for you? No, I just wanted to make sure I wrote something down before I forgot. I had asked uh, Brian Peterson, the pitching coach, for a little more of a rundown on Evans. There's a one-hopper oh, Rallis and a great Gotta play. Tag Tags the bag, throws down, they tag the runner, <laughs> double play. That was beautiful. A high chopper right over the bag, Nate Rollison. Oh, my. And they are going to count the run heads up. Base running a Lynn Jones. No gonna way. Give the home plate umpire an earful. No way. Well, again, a ground ball right over the bag. Nate Rollison to his left backhands it snags it right there steps on the bag as he catches it turns and throws to Goody the runner headed down to second base he puts the tag on the runner going down there for the third out of the inning and the runner on third broke for the plate the umpire said he crossed the plate just before the tag was made at second base so now it is three to nothing but the inning is over one run on one hit and error nobody left on the bases bottom of six coming up three nothing Rattlers So bottom of six, Kane County, down now 3 nothing. We'll have top of the order, Win Garcia, and Katze do up. Well, good pitching will stop good hitting. That is the axiom for baseball, and that is what has been played out here so far. The Cougar bats pretty much stifled. But now we go to the top of the order here in the third look for these guys and Mr. Trawick. Win as a strikeout. Fielder's choice. So he stands in. Pitch down and in for a ball. Well, I want to know how the runner from first didn't get to second in time for that play to end. And obviously he had a much bigger lead than the runner at third base. And yet the runner at third base scored in that time. Not a chance. Well, that's a judgment call by the home plate umpire. There's a bouncer foul. Goes into the dugout. First base side. One and one to Randy Wynn. And there are no instant replays here to overrule Chris Guccione. Uh-huh. There's a curveball outside for a ball. Two and one. Swing and a miss. Chase that one down and away. 
two and two the count. And say I've heard basketball coaches say we're the next war if, if and when that ever breaks out they should just give everybody whistles and referee jerseys. <laughs> Strike three, called at the knees, and Randy not happy with that one either. Uh, you just cannot take that pitch with two strikes and the ball going down on Randy. A little low, he thought, but you just can't take it that close around the plate. One dead for Amore Garcia, who has an infield single and a line to short. This crowd is just astonishing. Uh, there is no way oh. that this is not the new record. It has to be the record. That pitch up and in. Just turned the other way from that high tight fastball, 1 0. That, better known as chin music. Oh, yeah. Wow. Amore just shaved just now if he didn't do it this morning. That is low, and it's 2 0. Which brings me to something, uh, maybe not using the terminology of chin music. That'll bounce in, 3 0. Did you know where the term knocked out of the box essentially when a pitcher gets knocked out of the game they refer to it many times as knocked out of the box you know where that comes from i don't know that well actually prior the mound was in a square shape like a box that pitch is high ball four to amori garcia have you been watching the ken burns special again <laughs> <laughs> And taking notes, yeah. Maybe the better you're older than you look. I don't know. <laughs> I haven't doing my homework. <laughs> Man, I did not know that. Something else I did not know either. I, I was of course, curious. It probably, it probably wasn't a mound back then either. Well, <laughs> this is true. But it was in the shape of a square, hence uh, the term knocked out of the box. And speaking of that, even though no one's up in the bullpen, we're going to get a trip to the mound by Pat Rice. So the coach. Walk to Garcia, one on, one out. Mark Kotzing is a bunt single and a fielder's choice so far. Boy, Kane County being shut out so far on four hits. And we don't want to be shut out again today. First off, that means you're not going to win if you don't score any runs. But second of all, that'll be what, 15th time this year we'd be blanked if it's uh, shut out today? Oh, my. You had to bring that up, didn't you? Yeah, I guess, you know. The Cougars have been shut out 14 times this season. They have shut out their opponents seven times, but only once in April, four times in May, four times in June, three in July, and two in August. Have the Cougars gone out without scoring any runs? Well, the weird part about that thing was when we were looking up that stat before the ball game. For some reason, a lot of those shutouts happened after rainouts and off days. Well, I don't know why that is, but a couple, three of them have been after days off, and you know, hitters as much as anybody get a rhythm hitting the ball just like a pitcher gets a rhythm on the mound I pop foul coming back you know right and when that's broke up by inactivity oh yeah you know you can lose your hitting eye a little bit lose that little bit of that edge Mark Kotze can tell you about that as he followed that one back he, he was off for two weeks in between the Olympics and then a week before he came here well and that happened as well there's a throw to first and the runner back that happened to Ryan Dempster because he had two weeks mm -hmm. off after he got beamed in the face on the mound. There's a shot to straightaway deep center field. Long run going back. The catch going to be made. Mathis just in front of the track in dead center. Garcia goes back and there's two away. Boy, you can't hit it much better than that. He hit a rocket to center field. Mathis just gets a great jump on the ball with great speed. There's not too many balls that are going to go over his head or get past him. Two dead for Nate Rollison was a walk and has bounced into a double play. But Dempster, of course, we got him in the Burkett trade with the Rangers, but just before that trade was made, he got beaned in the face, and his eye was swollen up big time and swollen shut. And because of that, we had to wait over a week before we could pitch him, even after we got him in the trade. And that meant he was over two weeks without throwing, and that first time out, I mean, he was a little he was a little shaky because let's face it he was a little you know off after that much inactivity but of course the start after that was the one hit complete game shutout mm -hmm. almost a no hitter so obviously once he got back into his uh, routine he was pretty good well, we're going to need one more of those one hit shutouts tomorrow if we can get it and we got to win this one first you got that right we're down three nothing now bottom of six runner at first two out and oh two pitch coming right now 
to Big Nate, except the pitcher now steps off. Lefty Greg Shear down in the bullpen for the Timber Rattlers warming up in case King County gets anything going here, which we hope they do. A nice two out, extra base hit right here. I'd go for that. Foul back to the screen. Two strikes. <laughs> Well, well, considering there's about 14,000 people here today, no surprise, just about everybody you and I have ever met has I think so. wandered into the booth today, too. Here's the stretch in the 0-2. Pitch outside and low, 1-2. and two. You know, I mentioned that knocked out of the box thing before, Mark. It's something else I did not know. I saw this just the other day. Bob Gibson, that tremendous season he had in 1968, saw a stat on that. He had 34 starts that year, had... 28 complete games. Oh, get out. 20. That's back before relievers were really used a lot, even though that started in the 50, the 50s. Swing that trend. and a miss. Beautiful curveball. I'll and get the. That was the year he had the ERA of what? One what? <laughs> I believe it was 1.12 is what he finished. Somewhere around there, the, still the all-time record. But he, at 28 out of 34 starts, he completed. The six times he was taken out, Mark, were for pinch hitters. He was never <laughs> once knocked out of a game oh, in the middle of an inning man. the entire season. That's frightening. That's how dominating he was that year. No runs, no hits, no errors, and one left after the Rollison strikeout. They go to the seventh. It is three nothing Wisconsin. Top of seven, three nothing Wisconsin leads. Left-handed hitter, Adonis Harris and the sixth hitter at the plate. And a first pitch swing and a miss. Outside corner, one strike. Harris in a bounce, out to second, and an RBI double. Rod Getz, his seventh inning of work. Boy, this is a nice outing for Rod Getz. Pitch outside for the ball, one and one. We got to pick him up. Look at this attendance total. Well, we knew it was going to be a record. We just weren't sure what it was going to be. Here's a ground ball to second. Garcia throws him out from the outfield grass. 13,000 plus. That was 13,129. 13,129. So the season total ends up at 436,076. What was the season average? <laughs> 6,607. 6,607 ends up as the season average, 13,129. As there's a strike on the outside corner, this is in a place that realistically holds about seven or eight. <laughs> I mean, just astonishing. Here's a fly ball, short left field, Katze coming out. He will get there easily and make the catch. There's two away. And that brings well, up Ramon Vazquez, who was over to a couple of ground outs to second. Like you say, it holds about 7,000, and at least 6,000 people are sitting on other people's laps right now. Oh. <laughs> Just that's how you amazed. That's how you get there. You double it up. 13. Wow. I told you, I had not seen a line like that at cars in a long time when I no, well, got again, here, and that was at quarter after five. Again, they were parking people in places I'd never seen them park cars. So there's no doubt about that. There's a swing, and I mean, swung out of his shoes on that one for the strike. And it's one and one, and they're having a whole lot of fun. And they're going to be here for a while because still to come, the Jesse White tumblers after the game and oh my. the fireworks display. That pitch high and outside, and you, two and one. You sure there's no way we can get one of those guys as a base runner? You can see yeah. it now running down on a steal. They, they go to put the tag on him. He does a flip over him and just gets to the second base. Base open. And Randolph, left-hand hitter, the nine hitter at the plate with a runner at second and two dead. Randolph, a pop to the catcher and a single. <laughs> First pitch, ball one. Now the 1-0 pitch. Off the end of the bat, a floater, left center field. Conte will get there, though, easily. And that takes care of that, the fly to left to retire the side. Well, again, a great effort by Vasquez to stretch that into a double. And if that ball would have had eyes a little bit more to fall in, there's another run. That's how you pick them up and manufacture them your own, on your own sometimes. No this doubt. time the Cougars 
come through. No runs, one hit, no errors, one left. Bottom of seven coming up. It's three to nothing, Wisconsin. So bottom of seven, Kane County coming to the plate. Down three, nothing. See what they can do with Booty, Fanaro, and McCartney coming up. Booty so far today, a fielder's choice and a strikeout. Well, it's City Auto Records, 690 McClure and Aurora. They feature the largest selection of used car parts in the Fox Valley, and they pay top dollar for cars and trucks. Call City Auto Records for details at 898-2900, 898-2900. Pitch to Booty, curveball in there for a strike inside corner at the knee. By the way, Chicago White Sox, 5-1 winners today in Toronto. And Cubs crushed the Braves 12-zip. There's a swing and a miss at a curveball. Of course, you had the Cubs in the 13-run pool today, didn't yes. you? Yeah, exactly. They couldn't have gotten one more. Uh, I was missed it by that much. Swing and a miss. Chase that pitch in the dirt, but he may reach the throw in time. Well, the catcher Thompson covered some ground in a hurry. Well, it's not tough to cover ground when the batter is not aware of where the ball's at. Josh's first two steps were to the dugout instead of down the first baseline. And Once he realized where the ball was at because he took a bad swing, got spun around, then he took off and then again you know, he's out by a step and those are two that he gave away at the, at the get-go so he'd have beaten that out if he was keeping in his eye on the ball all times. Six K's for Trawick. Panaro bounces one foul, third base dugout and a strike. Huntley Factory Shops, located at I-90 and Route 47 in beautiful Huntley, Illinois, is where you'll never pay full price. You'll always receive the best in brand name merchandise. There are over 50 shops where you'll find great savings and great quality. Pitch downstairs for a ball. Say via conversation today, uh, she was out at Wabansi Community College for an alumni baseball game. It's the only time I get the bat, so <laughs> I made sure I showed up for that. Pitch down and in. Caught that corner, though, one and two. That's a conversation just a, about the Cougars with a, a Jeff Markley, who you may or may not recall that name. A pretty good baseball player. Sure. Definitely a baseball man. He played the Division One level at one time. One, two, pitch in the dirt. Two and two. Now, he follows the Cougars quite a bit. He says about Josh Booty, I thought it was a very good observation. He goes, he swings the same all the time. He really just does not adjust in any shape or form. Pitch will bounce in. Three and two. That's one of those things that Josh really needs to work on. Now the three, two. And a beautiful wow. curve ball strike three at the knees. And Joe complaining, saying it was down low, but hell no dice. Two away. Wow. Well, Lynn Jones is going, now come on. This zone is floating. That ball was caught at dirt level, but a breaking ball, good overhand breaking ball going down. Yeah, Lynn Jones gave him a piece of his mind on that one. There's a chopper left side, deep in the hole, long throw. Ramirez gets him. Summer McCartney bounces to short. It's a 1-2-3 inning. No oh. runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left on. So we go to the eighth inning, still 3-0 Wisconsin. Uh, just watching the Wauer family on the first base dugout doing the Macarena. <laughs> Can't be fun at the old ball yard. Top of eight, Kane County down three zip as Wisconsin coming to the plate, but a new pitcher on the hill for the Kane County Cougars. And it will be Evans on the hill. So, a new man, Michael Evans, left hander, will come on to pitch here in the eighth inning as. Gets his day is done overall. Gets did a pretty good job here today. Well, Rod had a quality outing. Two of the three runs were earned, Q just tells us, but uh, he threw pretty well. Unfortunately, the Kane County Bats have not been able to take advantage of a pitcher who came into today's action four and five with a 4.77 ERA. And, you know, a guy averaging almost giving up five runs a game hasn't given up one yet. And they only got six more outs. You know, six more cracks at it here. 
against Treywick, and uh, he may not finish this game. Some guys have been up and down in that bullpen for the Timber Rattlers. Looper, and that's going to be a base hit left field side. Katsia will come over, cut it off, and gun it to second base. A nice throw holds him to a single, but he gave it a thought, but held there. Well, Mark Katsia, we've talked so many times about his athletic ability and what a good arm he has. I think he likes to be out left field because he can show it off on a play like that. Yep. We have not seen him make a bad throw, essentially, to any base yet, especially the second base on any ball hit like that. It's one hop, boom, strike right to the bag every time. And, you know, from center field, you don't have the same kind of distance to throw that. But uh, from left field, he just challenges people to try and run on him. So Evans gives up a leadoff single to Joe Mathis here in the eighth, and now it's Carl Thompson who was single, double, bounced out, and scored twice. Yeah, Rod Getz had a quality outing via a couple bad breaks here and there, essentially. His ERA goes down to 501 now after that performance today. Is that pitch in the dirt? A wild one. The runner goes to second. Also, Michael Duvall now throws in the bullpen, the other lefty. Evans, by the way. Fastball, curveball change, and not a lot of heat. He hits 84, pretty much on the average, and can get it up to 87 when necessary, but he just mostly, you know, controls the type of pitcher and hits his spots with the good off-speed stuff. Mike is five foot nine, but 185 pounds, pretty stockly built. Eleven to six, Cincinnati over Florida right now. Lenny Harris with a grand slam. The cue tells us. Foul out of play there. One and one right now to Thompson. Stretching the one one. Pitch inside, two and one. Well, it would be real nice to not let any runs get in here because uh, three runs is still attainable. Four starts getting to that point where you're going to be pressing a little bit to get get back even with them. The two one, a foul out of play. Again, Kane County to have any realistic shot at the playoffs really had to win tonight. So to have any realistic chance, King County's got to come back and win this game. 2-2 two -two pitch. Runner goes. Ground ball. That's a base hit to right field. He's going to score easily. RBI single to right for Carl Thompson on the hit and run. Well, do the terms snake bitten and frustrated come to mind? I think uh, pretty easy to say that right now. Ryan Robertson even picked up the bat after that line single. Kind of slammed through it back towards their dugout and Trying, trying to get it out of the way. The runner coming down there, but he was a little ticked off. Just frustrating. Worked that hard to get two strikes and got a ball out over the plate where he just punched it that way. And again, going with the pitch, good jump. You know, they always say it's easier to steal third base, especially when their lefty's on the mound and a right-handed hitter's up. You got all your uh, advantages in place. And he got a huge jump. He'd have had a real good chance of stealing third, even if that ball would not have been knocked in the right field. David Arias, that pitch is a wow in the dirt. Goes back to the screen. And the runner taking second and taking a wide turn will hold there. Now, now runner at second for Arias, which is even more scary. Since we are such a tremendous source of not only entertainment, but information and educational as well here. <laughs> yes. <laughs> There's a fastball. Where was that pitch? Wow. 2 and 0 oh. Said it once, said it a million times. you got to be around the plate to get that call. And he has been all over the place since... All of a sudden, you catch the umpire off guard when you get one close to the strike zone. 2-0 pitch. Inside, 3-0. and oh. But as you well know, the home plate is 17 inches wide and five-sided. Yeah. It used to be only 12 inches wide. But in the year 1900, <laughs> oh, <laughs> yes, man. 95 years ago, they changed it. You it's are been amazing. the same ever since. That throws that pitch behind Arias. It goes to the screen. And the runner goes to third in the wild one. Plus, it's ball four. Well, I would have much rather Mike Evans hit him. Yeah, really. And Arias, being as big a guy as he is, he could have just taken that pitch for the team, but uh, wisely moved in and uh, let that ball go behind him. He knew a catcher was not going to have an easy time trying to catch it. Went back to the screen and moved the runner up to third now. Well, this is, a, this is a tough situation for Evans. This is a guy who's pitched in rookie ball all year in front of friends and relatives 
well, there you know, you go. maybe 18 people per ball game on the average. And now you put them on the mound in front of 13,000 plus in a must win playoff type of ball game. And he has struggled. Runners at the corners. There's still nobody out. A run in and Luis Tinoco at the plate. 0 for 2. He's been hit by a pitch and scored a run. And he'll step off again. He doesn't have it. And now Lynn Jones. I was going to say Lynn Jones now going to come out and that'll yeah. probably be it. Uh, he took a chance bringing the fresh arm, but Mike Evans just not sharp enough. Well, Pat Trent, the last one to be warming up. Duval had warmed up and had just been waiting. So let's see which one gets called. But Evans is out. New man will come in. We'll take a break and tell you about him after this. So it's in the eighth inning of a four to nothing Wisconsin lead back after this timeout. So as we come back, Pat Trent, the new pitcher for the Keene County Cougars, so Lynn Jones making his call for help to the bullpen. Could you do the same if you become stranded on the road? You could if you had a mobile phone from Mobile Tel and Cellular One. Mobile Tel, the official cellular communications company of the Keene County Cougars. Visit one of their many stores in the area, including West Chicago, Glen Ellen, and Geneva. Mobile Tel and authorized Cellular One Sales and Service Center. For more information, give them a call, 630-231-9440. That trend will make appearance number 26 on the year. He's gone 45 innings, given up 42 hits. He's walked 20, struck out 39. He's given up 29 runs, 21 of those earned for an ERA of 4.20. He has no wins, just one loss, and no saves on the year. And he has done awfully well. He was one of our players of the game a couple nights ago, thanks to his nice performance in relief on Thursday. Four innings. No runs, two hits, face the minimum 12 batters as both guys with the hits are raised on double plays. Not bad to go four innings of relief and face the minimum. We'll see what he can do here today. First and third, nobody out, top of eight. Four nothing Wisconsin as is. Luis Tinoco with the plate and the pitch. Hard ground ball, base hit left field. Gets by a booty. Run comes in five to nothing. Facing the best hitting team in the league and they are proving it again here tonight. Oh boy, Luis just looking first ball fastball and got it, and he just turned on it. Hit a rocket past Josh Booty down at third base. Doug Carroll, here's a ground ball to second base, could be two. Relay from Goodell in the dirt, Rollison picked it. Great job. Well, that's just a huge play by Nate Rollison. Good play all the way around, but huge by Nate to stretch backhand that. And you know, many times in a ball like that, you maybe just come off the bag and knock it down. Have the presence of mind. You know the runner's coming around third. You can't give him another run. But uh, you also need some outs. And that was a big play right there. 4-6-3 double play. Runner at third. Two out now for Adonis Harrison. RBI double. A couple of ground outs for him since. Again, 5 nothing here. Top of eight for Wisconsin. The ball still in the bullpen for Kane County. Here's the pitch. Fastball outside, ball one. Well, on the bottom of eight for Keene County, it'll be 8-9-1. Goodell, Robertson, and Wynn do up. Only two more cracks at it as that one fouled out of play. Left field side, up onto the hill. Let's give this new all-time record crowd of over 13,000. Something to cheer about here in these final two innings. Stretch in the 1-1. Fastball down and in. Two and one. Trent digs in. Gets the toe hold right where he wants it by the rubber. Now Harrison ready. And the two one. Hard ground ball. Rollison, good backhand snap to his right. Throws to the pitcher covering for the out. Boy, Nate have a defensive day today. Boy, that was huge. That was a lot of ground Nate covered that time to his right. It, again, he's got to do that because we've got a second baseman playing way over up the middle. And it, tremendous and a nice toss. He got his feet set and made a nice toss to Pat Trent to lead him to first base. Two runs, three hits, no errors, one left. Bottom of eight coming up. Five nothing Rattlers. Five nothing Rattlers, bottom of eight, Kane County. Going to need to come back here. Goodell, Robertson, and Wynn do up. 
They'll take advantage of the long Labor Day weekend with Sears Hardware Stores. Right now, every gallon of paint is on sale. Like the Easy Living Flat Interior on sale for $9.99. That's a savings of more than 20%. And if you need help matching colors, they can help. So be sure to check out the Sears Hardware Store in your neighborhood. There are 27 locations around Chicagoland. Like Crystal Lake at Main Street on Route 14. Sears Hardware Stores, there is a craftsman right in your neighborhood. Goodell a strike out in a single so far. Takes that one down and in ball one. Well, the best thing King County could do right now is get a couple base runners off, her, off of Mr. Trawick here. It's a strike at the knees. Trawick came in 4-5, four a 477 ERA. 82 hits in 71 in the third inning. Well, that's what I mean, V. He's throwing as well as he's thrown all year. Goodell hits one deep to left field, but not going to carry deep enough. Tinoco will make the catch. One out. I mean, uh, what's going on here? Yeah, I, he's just uh, in, in good rhythm, good groove. Four hits. How many walks do we have? How many base runners we've, have we had all night here? And He's got a nice, smooth motion. And he's walked we, two. We need, well, there you go, six base runners all game. We need to get some base runners here to get into their bullpen. <laughs> I feel our chances are better against them. <laughs> and no sooner I say that than Mr. Rice steps to the top of the dugout and motions down there. Uh, get up and throw down there, will you? Yeah, let's get somebody ready. Pitch he down motioned. and in. I was going to say, Mark, he didn't go left-handed, right-handed. He just went sidearm with his motion so they all know who he wants. He wants uh, Greg Shear, the left-handed sidearmer down there to get up and throw. 1-0 pitch. That one going to be a strike. And 1-1 one and one to Robbie. Doubled and is lined out. Now the 1-1. One, one. Fastball down and in, 2-1. Well, since it is that time again. <laughs> yeah. You know what, though, V, I, I'll take mercy on you here. Last, possibly last game of the season that you and I will work. Pitch outside and low, 3-1. <laughs> and one. Yeah. And we'll go with another trivia question for you instead uh, of a stumper, a, a rule stumper kind of a thing. Uh-huh. Who is the only pitcher in Major League history to have 3,000 strikeouts. Ground ball. And the first baseman, Arias, to his right field, throws to the pitcher for the out. The 3-1. Two down for Randy Wynn. The only pitcher in Major League history to have 3,000 strikeouts and less than 1,000 walks. Well, that takes care of Nolan Ryan. <laughs> um. Well, obviously the 3,000 strikeout list is a somewhat elusive group. All right. No Elusive. Kidding. Elite is what I meant to say. Yeah, that too. That too. <laughs> Man. Uh, let's see. Since every other thing you've talked about today happened in 1873. <laughs> no. No, I will not. There's a strike at the knees. <laughs> this uh, one is much more recent. Oh, okay. And it's somebody very near and dear to your cubby blue heart. Here's the 01. Outside for the ball. One and one. Wait, I don't know how many more hints I can throw out to you. <laughs> Jeez. And I still can't get it. That's scary. <laughs> one one pitch. Down in the dirt. And becomes two and one. Well, if it's much more recent, than it, then it's got to be someone like Fergie Jenkins. Because I... Who else was in baseball that long to have that many strikeouts that wore cubby blue? Who was any good? <laughs> so well, if I've forgotten somebody, I'm sorry. What's the answer? No, you are absolutely correct. All Andy right. Jenkins. And how many walks did he give up in his career? Foul out of play, left field side. How many batters did he walk? He decayed over 3,000. That, that's your bonus right there, the bonus yeah. answer. <laughs> All right. Less than 1,000. 827. No, less than 1,000, but just barely. 997. Oh, jeez, oh, okay. <laughs> Here's the 2-2. Two, two. That one down and in, full count to win. Well, look at Squishy back here behind <laughs> us. He did looks did little, you go to the water park before the game, Jeff? <laughs> this looks a little, little drier now, no worse for wear. He's still got the towel around his neck though, trying to dry off. 3-2 <laughs> pitch. Curve swing Ooh. and a miss, a beauty, and down goes win. Boy, we have been retired now eight in a row by Trawick. 
have a day. Eight strikeouts for him now. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on. Top of nine coming up. Five nothing Wisconsin. Top of nine, a five nothing Wisconsin lead. New pitcher for the Keene County Cougars in the ninth inning is the lefty pitcher Michael Duval. So Duval is in to face Ramirez, Vasquez, and Randolph. Seven, eight, nine here in the ninth. Well, the numbers for Michael Duvall. This will be his 40th appearance on the season. Gone 45 innings, given up 41 hits. He has walked 21, struck out 44, given up 20 runs. 11 of those earned for a 2.20 ERA. He's got four wins, one loss, and eight saves. Joe Ramirez. A couple of flyouts and a bounce to third so far. Here's the pitch. Fastball, chop foul, rolls back, and it's one strike. Again, tomorrow night, 7 p.m. in Appleton, 645 our pregame, and then the final game of the regular season, Monday, 1 p.m., 1245 for our pregame. Curve is outside for the ball, one and one. Duval wants a new baseball. Number 13 on the hill, ready to go for the 1-1 pitch. Tap that one foul. Goes back to the screen, 1-2. and two. Well, Since I've been throwing out all these little tidbits of information that seem to all be at the turn of the century, <laughs> I got one more for you, of course. Yes. And that pitch going to end up as a strikeout. Robbie will tag the batter, Ramirez. And one away. Hey there. Way back. Way back, I say. A little before your time. 1893. Mark. You are you are amazing. <laughs> yes, go ahead. That's when the mound was moved to its current distance. Right. Of 60 feet and 6 inches. Yes. What was it before that? Pitch outside and low. <laughs> I don't know. Can you believe 50 feet? Oh, even I would throw hard from that distance. <laughs> Pitch outside and low, 2-0. and oh. Although, let's face it, back then, I mean, I at least know early in this game's history, the, the pitcher, it was like a softball. It was like the idea wasn't to have him miss. The idea was to have it so he could hit the ball. That pitch outside, the pitcher was sort of inconsequential. It was like, just toss it up there, let him hit it, and see what happens. Then I think once they deci- decided that the pitcher could be more important by getting guys out that they realized 50 feet was a little too close. Well, that's exactly the, one of the ironies of the whole thing. They were indeed pitchers, called pitchers. There's a strike at the knees. Yet that's what they did. It was a nice, easy, soft pitch yeah. and not really throwing. Then once they allowed them to finally throw, they became throwers, yet that terminology has totally reversed itself. Now if you're a thrower, that means you're not pitching very well. Exactly. Swing and a mess. Two vowels, two batters, two strikeouts. Brings up Ed Randolph. Oh, yeah, he's just a thrower. He's not a pitcher. <laughs> Boy, Duval, how about his month of August? Duval, before this appearance today, 10 appearances in August. ERA of zero with five saves. 11 and a third innings. Seven hits, no runs, 10 strikeouts, five walks. Opponents hitting a buck seventy. Off him this month. That's pretty good. Oh my! <laughs> and he's just struck out these two batters here. Oh, one pitch that went down and in one and one to Randolph. That's not bad. Wow. Oh, well, that's certainly what you got to have from your closer. Swing and a miss, breaking ball down and away. I mean, I, that just shows you. What a great reliever, a great closer. If he's on, how valuable he can be to your team. Chopper up the middle by the bag. Garcia throws and gets him. Oh. What? Oh, they say Rollison was pulled off the bag. He scooped it to the outfield side. I didn't see that at all, though Nate not arguing. Boy, I didn't think he pulled his foot. But Wow, Amori from behind second almost got him. That was a great play. Amore Garcia all the way behind the bag, like you're saying. Goodell couldn't quite get to it, and he crossed in front of Amore. 
and kept on running to get out of the way of the throw, but uh, Nate Rollison with a long stretch. It, a big guy like Nate, though, when he, his foot's on the bag, you know it. You know, when his foot's still on the bag, the umpire can recognize that the bag's kind of oh, squished yeah. down a little bit. Yeah, really. He was right on top of it. Going to call it a hit. One on two to Ed. Joe Mathis. The 1-0 pitch. Wow, that's another great pick, though, by Nate. But apparently just pulled the foot. That pitch in the dirt for the ball. Other month of August statistics. Again, Nate Rollison in August. 324 average with eight doubles and 23 RBIs. Josh Booty in August, only hitting 179, but eight homers, 22 RBIs. How many hits? Wow. Here's a chop up the middle. Shortstop Goodell will come over, tag it, and tag the bag. And that takes care of that on a fielder's choice. Not only Nate Rollins in the 324 average, 35 hits. He did not commit one error defensively either. Well, he certainly has gotten better as the seasons went along and a very well-earned player of the month award no doubt about that josh booty 20 hits in 112 at bat six of them doubles eight of them homers so we had 14 hits in the month or 20 hits in the month 14 of them extra base hits and well, 22 rbi yeah we've seen that many times from power hitters <laughs> they hurt you they hurt you big but they obviously have big roundhouse swings and uh, they do have holes in those swings and we've seen some teams take advantage of Josh in certain situations but as he keeps learning gets better he's going to be a good one so no runs on a hit no errors and a man left bottom of nine coming up last chance for Kane County they're down five to nothing bottom of the ninth inning last chance for Kane County they're down five to nothing Amore Garcia Mark Katze Nate Rollison coming up Garcia an infield single a line out and a walk Trawick trying to for a complete game, strike at the knees. Boy, Garcia this month, 312. Five doubles, a triple, a homer, nine RBIs, and seven stolen bases. And nails a base hit left field. Garcia. Lead off single here in the bottom of nine. Brings well, up Mark Katze. I was gonna say he that won't take long. And it that ball wasn't even in the left field, and Pat Rice was out of the dugout going, all right, get the lefty up again. Right like that, they're up in the uh, bullpen again for the Timber Rattlers. You were amazed by that complete game number that Bob Gibson had in 1968. And boy, how much the game has changed now, the use of relief pitchers. It's just night and day difference. First ball, fastball, low, but in the strike zone to Mr. Kotze. Realized back in 1933, Mark Carl Hubble through all 18 innings. <laughs> Swing and a miss. Chase that one down and away. In a game that was, it was deadlocked, zero to zero. So that's why he was still in, but he had 18 innings shutout. Did not walk an entire batter in that whole game. Talk about control. Oh yeah. 0-2 oh, pitch. Downstairs, one and two. That makes a big difference when you're able to put the ball where you want to in all aspects of the game. And it's still a pitcher hitter confrontational kind of game that's the thing that makes baseball so different now something got loose in the right field corner some fans dropped something over there but the, I think one of those soft baseballs got away yeah, throw this in here too V Stan Kovale uh, Kovaleski one time went seven innings before he threw a ball in a game don't ask me where I got this information <laughs> You're making this stuff up. No, man. not at all. Breaking ball outside, two and two to Katze. Seven innings without throwing a ball. Before a here. ball was called. Get out Back of here. Back in the old days when the strike zone was a little bit bigger. Yeah, no kidding. Two-two pitch. Low, full count. Back when they weren't throwing sliders and knuckleballs and curves and split finger and everything else. Just <laughs> throw it. And either hit it or don't hit it. Wow. Here comes my fastball. High ball for you, walked him. First and second. Nobody out. Bottom of nine for Nate Rollison. Then Booty, then Fanaro, then McCartney. Keep going. We I hope. like the sounds of that. We hope. I like the sounds of it. So, Nate, 
Left-hand hitter at the plate. Timeout called. And there's going to be a trip out to the mound. So with that, see if they make the pitching change right here or not. And indeed, they're going to make a move and call for the reliever. So we will take a break. We are in the bottom of the ninth inning. It's a 5 nothing Wisconsin lead, but King County with two on, nobody out. Back after this, timeout. New pitcher on the hill is Greg Shear, the left-hander coming on. Here for the Rattlers, Shear. 6'5", 205, 24 years old from Louisville, Kentucky. Well, he'll make his 34th appearance on the year. He's gone 53 innings, giving up 56 hits. He has walked 31, struck out 52, giving up 39 runs, 37 of those earned for a 6.28 ERA, which is rather large, but he has won three and lost one with no saves. Six foot five, 205, left-hander, throws submarine style. And he's going to face a left-handed hitter right here. Hopefully he can get a pitch that he can drive somewhere. A lot of room down that left field line as they play him the pole. So Nate Rollison at the plate. Two on, nobody out. Bottom of nine, we're down five. First pitch in the dirt, ball one to Big Nate. You know, somewhere along the line, you think that either prior to those warm-ups or after those warm-ups that he and Carl Thompson would have talked somewhere. <laughs> the first pitch, Thompson walks out to the mound shaking his head going, no, that's not what I called for. <laughs> so they just got the sign straight just now as he went out there. Now the 1-0. Side arms him almost hit Rollison inside. 2-0. Boy, would this be something? <laughs> we get him on a big rally here. Oh, my. We'll take a walk right here. Ooh, there is a strike down and in. Two and one. Certainly like to see Nate get that pitch again down and in like that and just turn on it, hit it between the hole between first baseman and second baseman. Two one pitch. Swing and a miss. Boy, good breaking ball there, two and two. Keep your head on the ball all the way. That ball is tough. It starts low and stays low and goes away from you. And if you don't stay with it the whole way, you're going to lose track of the last half foot. Swing and a miss. Again, breaking ball. Down and away. Down goes Rallison. One down for Josh Booty. Two strikeouts. Fielder's choice as he stands in. Boy, no messing around there. Once he got that first strike in there, he knew what he had to do. And I was going to say now they'll probably go with the right-hander who's down there. Brent Hidden warming up, so they might have just brought the lefty in to face the lefty, and indeed that's the case. While well, yeah. they're managing this like it's the seventh game of the World Series. They're already in the playoffs. What do they care? <laughs> so Brent Hidden going to come in and face Booty, Fanaro, McCartney, Goodell. Those are all right-handers coming up next, so they bring the righty in. So Hidden comes on. We'll take another break. So, again, we're in the ninth inning of 5 nothing. Wisconsin lead back again after this timeout. So here we are with Brent Hidden, the new man on the hill for the Wisconsin Timber Rattlers. Hidden, the right-hander, 6'2", 170, 20 years old from Forestville, Australia. Hidden on the hill. Well, Mike, this will be his 50th appearance on the year. Gone 96 in the third inning. He's given up 82 hits. He has walked only 41, struck out 113, given up 32 runs, 30 of those earned for that 2.80 earned run average. 11 wins. Four losses and 11 saves. So this is their right-handed closer, whereas Aaron Schaefer is their left-handed closer. Breaking ball high to Josh Booty. Ball one. Two on, one out, bottom of nine. We're down five. Curve ball strike outside corner at the knee. He is one and one. Well, I, don't, I don't want that 15th shutout, by the way. I was going to say... You knew this was going to be the case for being a right-hander and to throw that breaking ball away from Big Josh. The 1-1. Breaking ball too far outside that time. Two and one. Well, as with pitching, it begins and ends with your legs hitting somewhat the same way. Balance, 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 and timing. And Josh's first move with this hip is out. The left hip just goes out. Hands follow. Curveball strike outside corner there, two and two. And and he's nowhere 
where he needs to be to hit those pitches that are going away from him. I, of course, am an expert at that because <laughs> that's how I swing, too, at curveballs. 2-2 <laughs> two pitch. You just weren't paid as well. Swing oh. and a miss. Curves him down and in that time, and down he goes. Down to our final out, Joe Fanaro. Mm. So, two on, two out, bottom of nine, down five. Fanaro with the play. Breaking ball strike outside corner at the knees. Boy, I made the remark not long ago that, hey, let's get two guys on base, which we then did, so we can get into their bullpen. Well, apparently I was wrong. <laughs> good idea, though. Just didn't work out in practice. On paper, it looked good. Trawick was so effective, wanted to get him off the hill. Ground ball, third baseman to his left, scoops, throws, and gets him at second base. Middle of the diamond on the force out, and the ball game is over. Fielder's choice ends it. Katze erased on the 5-4 for out number three. No runs, one hit, no errors. Two men left on. Final score, Wisconsin 5, Kane County nothing. We're going to come back and start to wrap it up after we take this timeout. 